Hey folks, Toby here, and this is going to be another video in the series How to Chibus Outcast, how to play in one hero template in Heroes Free. And now that I've already overviewed in these series like the generic basics, like the secondary skills that are good or bad and are, you know, slippers category. <laughs> um we'll be going through each faction one by one so for a bit of context uh, throughout these videos i'll be referring to sort of their tier list like how people usually rate each faction compared to another um i think i'll edit it somewhere on the screen there there whatever uh so yeah that's just a bit of context and in these following videos about each faction each i'll be explaining why they are rated as such uh, what's so good about them, what's so bad about them, and how you usually end up playing those, I suppose. So, yeah, in this video, we'll be talking about... Let's talk Conflicts, uh, the most Pepega faction there is. Whatever applies to other factions, just kind of does into conflux it's it's such a weird faction it's like so so weird um i don't even know where to begin with so let's start let's start with the heroes the preferred choice by pretty much everyone is fewer just because you start with advanced offense which is really good and your specialty is fire elementals the one thing noteworthy i suppose about specifically fewer's specialty is that unlike other heroes where they have a specialty of a certain creature, Fjord does not give plus one speed to Fire Elementals. Which is very weird and I have no idea why. It might be the extra plus two damage that is switched with the speed, I'm not sure, but it just doesn't. Which is quite a bit of a bummer because you'd really love to have more speed on your Fire Elementals because in general this faction doesn't really have, you know, fast creatures or like fast enough, above 10 speed creatures. You obviously have, you know, upgraded Magic Elementals, you obviously have Fire Birds, but you pretty much, in Jeebus Outcast, you pretty much never go for Fire Elementals, so plus one speed would be really nice on Fire Elementals, but oh well. <laughs> so that's the preferred choice, Advanced Offense, obviously, really good. Pretty straightforward, very, you know, might focused hero. The other choice that some people go for, and I tried it out quite a bit myself, is Sealy. You start with specialty magic arrow, so your magic arrow does quite a bit of damage. You start with water magic as well, so that is pretty cool, immediately reducing the cost of your magic arrow. You also start with 30 mana, so you're only spamming, you know, magic arrows uh, cost like 40, uh, I mean, four mana only. So you go around the map, you spam that, it feels pretty good. Water magic uh, also allows you to have expert bliss at really early levels for your, you know, air elementals, for your storm elementals, for your pixies and sprites. Uh, expert bliss is super amazing, even for water elementals. By the way, they have a very wide gap of a wide range of damage, basically min to max. So expert bliss is, is really amazing. However, with that said, again, by most people. My heroes are considered to be far superior, so in those cases you just end up with pure. And with that out of the out of the way, let's go and jump into the actual gameplay. So conflux, just like any other faction, uh, wants to answer the question of you know what kind of army you want to go for, boxes or dwellings. And I think conflux takes it to the absolute extreme, where pretty much it's always box gaming. Like you don't really want to be building army. You want to flag some dwellings, which again is like the opposite of what any other faction does. Like if you're going typically for box gaming, you just don't flag any dwellings at all. Conflux does want to flag a few dwellings, but just because they're like kind of so good, you get so much army from them. Especially, especially, where are those? Elemental Confluxes. You get to buy all you get to buy a total of four tiers of, you know, creatures from a single building. It's basically unguarded, like it's guarded by 12 shitters and shitters are so fucking bad that, you know, with this starting army I can easily take elemental conflux, no, no problem whatsoever. So even if you're going for purely box gaming, which in 90%, 95% of the games you will go for, you still want to flag a few of these just because of how much army you can buy from them. It is, you know, they're pretty amazing in my opinion. But other than that, going for dwellings, 
is pretty much never happening. The reason for that is first, let's take a look at the creatures. First, you have Earth Elementals. Um, they are so bad. <laughs> they are so bad. Let me give you a few comparisons. First, if you get a box of Air Elementals, you get 20 of them. If you get a box of Storm Elementals, <clears throat> you get 15 of them. If you get a box of Shitters, you know, unupgraded Earth Elementals, you get 50 of them. <laughs> Stormies are considered to be more than three times better than these shitters. Obviously, it doesn't always apply, but just to give you a comparison. Other factions tier 5 creatures, when you get the box of tier 5 creatures, you will get 15 to 20, depending on whether upgraded or not. Earth Elementals, again, you get 50 unupgraded. 50! That's 2.5 times more than any other faction. If they're upgraded, I think you get 35, which is still, you know, more than twice as many as any other faction. They're atrociously bad, atrociously bad. But when you get 50 of them, they kind of become good because, you know, 50 of any unit is an army. <laughs> so, yeah, don't build them. Don't, don't build them, don't flag their dwelling, forget they fucking exist unless you get a box of them. Tier 6 units, they're actually pretty good. Uh, no retaliation plus AoE attack is amazing. They have some speed even and upgraded, so that is kind of cool. They have a huge damage range from 10 to 20. So if you bless them, I mean, they hit like trucks. <laughs> they absolutely just hit like trucks. The problem with tier 6 units is their build path. You need to build literally everything to be able to build them. So it is very resource intensive. Not to mention that you need to be pretty much building. So you need four buildings. Plus you want a town hall plus this. So that's literally one day which you can afford not to build. Not a single other faction has this, you know, building intensity to be able to have a tier six dwelling in their main. So that is, I would say, the main reason why you never go for them. It's just not very realistic, on average, to build them. Because again, if you want to take their dwelling, Altar of Thought, you do need an early box. Like, this army is not enough to take them. Getting a few levels up will not be enough to take the dwelling. They, like, they're pretty annoying. You cannot take retaliations. Um, you cannot take retaliations. So it is a very, very awkward fight where, you know, you're probably going to rely on air elementals. You take one retaliation and then you just got to brawl it out. You got to have enough of a power stack to be able to brawl it out. Seely is kind of nicer in that regard because she has the magic arrow spam. She also has more spell power for, you know, if you have bless, you can apply it and then for free turns you will have bless. Fewer is really struggling with that early game because he starts with spell power, uh, one spell power and one knowledge. So he doesn't have the mana pool, he doesn't have the spell power to maintain the bless. And as fewer, you don't really level into spell power or knowledge that much. So taking the dwelling is quite a bit of a challenge. You need, preferably, if you get an air elemental box, then you know it's going to be easy. If you get a sprite box, I mean pixies box, I wouldn't be so confident still. So yeah, that is specific to conflicts. Now, lastly, for you know, building the army, you have Firebirds, which are extremely weak. They are super squishy. They are fast, which is really nice, but versus AI, like usually you don't need that much speed. You know, outspeeding your opponents doesn't give you that much. So going for Firebirds doesn't give you much either. Because of that, the preferred gameplay is pretty much always going for boxes. Going for boxes means that your kind of late game is always going to be somewhat shitty just because you're not generating any army whatsoever in your main and the army that you are generating is going to be most likely, you know, tier 4 units, maybe tier 2, so you don't generate enough of them, like the dwellings don't add percentage-wise enough for you to be able to compete at the late game. It is possible, you know, diplomacy can do wonders if you get like stables from um, another like random random desert town, if you get, you know, Man of Warsex, which opponent doesn't have, you're able to do just more every single turn due to stables, due to Man of Warsex compared to your opponent, then in the late game you can outscale your opponents, I suppose. 
but it is you're at a disadvantage fundamentally. That's what I'm getting at. Now, apart from boxes versus dwellings, uh, I think in my opinion it's boxes all the way, there are quite a few things nice about the conflicts biome in general. There are a few specific buildings. So one of them was, you know, elemental conflux, which is not a building that like other factions don't have any similar buildings to this, I suppose. That's what I'm getting at. Where you can build, you know, four creatures. I mean buy four types of creatures instead of one. I guess I guess uh, tower is very similar where you have the tier three creatures, unupgraded, upgraded, and then diamond and, and gold golems, I think. But in, in that case, in Tower's case, you don't really ever want to buy Diamond Golems or Gold Golems. You only go for uh, Stoners. So yeah, that is pretty unique. You also have other buildings, I suppose, very, very specific. So Gazebo, however the fuck you pronounce that, gives you 2,000 uh, experience um, once. So it's like an improved learning stone, which is really nice. There's also the building where you can get a lot of movement points. Just trying to find it, there we go, Mineral Spring. Plus 600 movement points, that is amazing. Uh, I think you can probably print some moves uh, with this, I'm not sure. Uh, it might be only plus one luck that is printable, not, not movement points, but maybe it is. You can just quickly check it out, but whatever. I'm sure you guys know. <laughs> So this one is a very interesting building. Uh, there's the Junkman where you can, I believe, sell the artifacts. There's also Hermit's Shack, random secondary skill upgrade once per hero, which, especially in late game, it's like pretty cool. It's like sort of like a worse, it's a bit worse than leveling up because you don't get a primary skill. You don't get to level up, you know, attack, defense, power, knowledge. But if you need to reach a certain threshold of, let's say, you have advanced water magic and you want to get to expert, this can do the trick. Now, the gimmicks kind of for Conflux don't really stop there. The other gimmick, and oftentimes people will just straight up rush this, is Magic University. Magic University is absolutely huge. It allows you to learn all four schools of magic. So what people sometimes will do is like in week one, they will try to avoid leveling into any schools of magic. Instead, they will grab something like scouting, something like diplomacy, maybe armor, level up, you know, offense, obviously. And then like maybe end of week one, start of week two, they will buy all the schools of magic that they want from the magic university. Basically guaranteeing a really solid, stacked uh, secondary skill tray for their hero. It is a play. I'm personally kind of torn about it. I, I think I don't build Magic University enough, so if you watch my streams, you might be, you know, a bit biased. And I also really like Water Magic. I think one of, you know, another sort of gimmick for Conflux is that Conflux with Expert Bless and Conflux without Expert Bless or without Bless in general, they're like completely different beasts. Conflux without Bless is worse than Necro. <laughs> Conflux with Expert Bless, it's like fucking Stronghold. That strong, I would say. Probably Fortress even. Because the specific about the, the creatures you have here is the damage range. So Pixies, you know, 1 to 2, which is very uh, typical for tier 1 creature. If you upgrade them into Sprites or you get them from boxes, I think the damage range is 1 to 3. So you can triple the damage. Air Elementals, 2 to 8. So if you can guarantee hitting for 8 every single time you attack, that is nuts. Water Elementals also have a huge cap, 3 to 7. Shitters also have a huge cap, 4 to 8. Fire Elementals are kind of the exception here where they have a pretty close damage range. It still means quite a bit, like in general, Bless is just really good. But for every other creature, and you know, Psychic Elementals, 10 to 20. It is amazing. But, like I said, for every other creature than Fire Elementals, Bless is just so, so huge. It's, like, it is massive, <laughs> like, absolutely massive. So usually when I play, my goal, my ideal first level up is into Water Magic and then rushing it to the Expert level. And just to kind of 
emphasize this maybe, um, provide you with a sort of implication that this has. Uh, the, the magic universe, the implication of having magic university available to you at any point is that you can be really greedy with your skill level ups. When playing other factions, whenever you're offered like air magic, earth magic, um, or water, you just immediately take them because you need to guarantee them for the late game. In this case, you can just completely ignore them for the sake of leveling a another secondary skill to expert level, which is really nice. It's something that you know you should be conscious about. In most cases, it doesn't really play out uh, to you know anything significant, but it can be pretty huge. Another sort of gimmick that they have is upgrading the creatures, which is also super super weird. So you have some creatures that you just really want to upgrade. There's barely any benefit having pixies unupgraded compared to sprites. Sprites move so much faster, they hit so much harder, they're, you know, all around better. The only exception is that you cannot take retaliation with uh, sprites. So maybe sometimes you consciously don't want to upgrade into sprites, but that is very, very uncommon. However, for tier 2, tier 3, and even tier 6 units, it is a very legitimate consideration whether you want to upgrade them or not. Tier 2, like mind you, to be able to upgrade tier 4 units, you need to upgrade first Altar of Air. So in pretty much every single game, you will build the building that allows you to upgrade tier 2 creatures. With that said, in most cases, you still don't want to upgrade them. Just because from melee, they changed into ranged. And now suddenly they have the melee penalty. Same goes for water elementals, and for tier 6 elementals, they become immune to magic. So, with unupgraded ones, they take huge advantage of bless. You know, effectively, well, not doubling them the, their damage, but, you know, increasing it significantly on a, you know, very consistently. However, if you upgrade them, they become immune to magic, and suddenly you can't bless them. So, that is really weird, and sometimes, like, legit, you would decrease your damage by actually upgrading them. So it is very weird. In many cases, you do not want to upgrade air elementals. In many cases, you do not want to upgrade water elementals. In many cases, you do not want to upgrade your psychics, which I cannot say about any other faction. Like just every other creature, if you can upgrade it, if you can afford it, go for it, like ASAP. It's a really huge power spike in most cases. Like maybe something like Pit Fiend, Pit Lords don't really gain any stats or health, I think, from upgrading. They only get the special ability. So in those cases, like upgrading doesn't really do much. Well, they gain speed. But yeah, apart from that, they don't gain much. So it might not be, you know, cost efficient upgrading them. But in this case, it's just not that it's not cost efficient. It's just that you legit don't want to upgrade them. Because if you go into Utopias on week 3 and you have, you know, a power stack of Storm Elementals plus whatever the Ice Elementals, I think Ice Elementals, you just won't be able to do Utopia because of the melee penalty. So yeah, upgrading in a lot of cases or Conflux just doesn't make sense. And then wrapping things up, what you kind of end up with is like a pure, pure tempo faction where you just try to get as many boxes as fast as possible and then tempo out of them. You have quite a few things supporting you, allowing you to be greedier, like, you know, with the secondary skills, you can be greedier. Uh, there are some buildings that allow you to be greedier, you know, giving you a lot of experience or giving you, you know, a level up, the secondary skill. So you can do those. You can also get a bunch of army without building it from elemental conflicts. But other than that, like it is sort of straightforward in that way. And since you're relying on this one specific gameplay, I think this is where this is kind of the reason why Conflux is, is not top tier. The boxes for Conflux are actually kind of fine. Like you're really happy when you get air elementals, you're really happy when you get fire elementals. Considering how many earth elementals you get, you're actually happy getting those boxes. I mean, you get 50 tier 5 units from a, from a box. That is amazing. That is like good enough to do Utopia pretty much. Just like, you know, 15 Gorgons. <laughs> 
but yeah, like you're you're happy picking up those boxes. Tier free creatures, you get 30 of them, so that is pretty good. But you need to get those big boxes. If you don't, you just won't have a good game because you cannot really build the army. So you're just simply very reliant on what kind of biome you'll get. And based on that, either you can tempo out into winning the game early on, or you will be, you know, fighting against the wind because you'll be at a fundamental disadvantage in the late game due to not being able to build any army. So that is my personal take on Conflux. I think I've touched more or less all the points that I wanted to. I don't know, let me know if you disagree with something. Conflux, I would say it's one of my weaker factions. Like I think Dungeon and Conflux are like the two factions that I play the worst. Maybe not Dungeon. Yeah, I would say like Conflux is probably my, my worst played faction in terms of like results. So maybe you guys disagree with something. Let me know what you think. Feedback is always most appreciated. Other than that, you know, have a good day. See you guys in my streams. Uh, cheers and bye.